Hello, in this video I'm going to explain um, motion of a particle in a magnetic field. Um, a uniform magnetic field. There should be a uniform in there. But um, as I've gone over before, dots mean out of the page. Think of it as the arrow coming out of the page. X with the circle around it is going into the page. Think as an arrow going into the page. I've also gone over the right hand rule in uh, magnetic force, which you should look at. I might link it. Um, but here's what we have. We have our thumb, our fingers, and our palms. Um, our thumb represents the magnetic field, our fingers represent velocity, and our palms represent force. So if you think about it, and we have a bunch of X's, or a magnetic field going into the page, you're going to have your thumb pointed also into the page, or in this case, into the screen. Now, picture a charged particle, and, and we toss in a charged particle, pretend these axes are all the way through, this charged particle will move in a circle. Now, although it's moving in a circle, it's really going down the length of the magnetic field. So if we have, say, a magnetic field, just pretend this is like the... this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and then we have another axis coming out towards us, which is where it's going in a circle. The particles actually go in like this. Down the magnetic field lines. Um, so if we have these particles and there's a velocity always going perpendicular to the circle it is making. So if we look, there's a circle and it kind of looks like this. Very poor circle, mind you, but um, here's the center. And then we have the force, which is always coming inwards towards the center, which keeps it on a circular path. It has to if it's keeping it on a circular path. If it wasn't keeping it on a circular path, it would be shooting out of the magnetic field and what a matter. Um, so there's a way that we could calculate, and this is how they calculate the mass of some particles, or they used to calculate the mass of some particles. Um, essentially what you have is you have, since there's only one force that we know of besides gravity acting on these, and gravity is so minuscule when we're talking about something to the negative 27th kilograms, which would be a proton, um, we have the change in force, or the sum of all forces, sorry, is equal to the force of magnetic field, or due to the magnetic field, which is equal to mass times acceleration. Newton's third law. I think that's pretty simple. Um, so now I'm going to use that equation. And we know that the force of a magnetic field is equal to QVB. Um, sin, this would be sine theta, but since we're at 90 degrees, um, don't plug that into sine theta, and we end up with getting 1. So I'm just going to take that out. So, which also is to equal mv squared divided by r, which is um, rotational acceleration, and they have to be equal to each other in order to maintain a circle, otherwise one force would be greater than the other one, and they'll be flying out. This is um, centripetal acceleration. Um, right here, this is centripetal acceleration. So now we can solve for r. So the radius of the circle has to be equal to the mass times velocity um, divided by the charge times the magnetic field. Because if you're setting these equal to each other, you can cancel out this one, 
cancel out that one. We have QBMV divided by R. So this is to calculate the radius of the circle. I don't know how many of you went over uh, angular acceleration. You probably should have all, but um, here's the angular speed. Or sorry, yeah, angular speed. And that's equal to the velocity divided by the radius. And this is the velocity tangent to the radius. If you don't know what that word is, just Google it. And that's equal to Q B divided by M. Um, that could help you. This equation right here. And this all should make sense to you if you think about it. Um, Newton's third law is maintained. That's on my website too. Autogram.net, right here. Um, because you're going to have to have an equal... Although there's this, uh, this force right here pulling it towards the center, which is the magnetic force, you're also having the centripetal force, which I'm going to make dark blue, coming out this direction. So in order to keep that constantly maintained inward, you have to um, cancel out that force using another force. So the sum of all forces has to equal zero and to maintain a circle. The final equation I'm going to write out is that of the period, or the time it takes to for one rotation. And that's equal to 2 pi r divided by the velocity. So this is the distance divided by the speed at which it's covering that distance. So that gives you seconds, which is the period, which is equal to 2 pi divided by the angular speed, since the angular speed already takes into account the radius. And that's also equal to 2 pi uh, mass divided by Q B, and that's derived from this equation right here. Um, I hope this has helped you guys out a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll answer. Um, I guess I'll run through a quick example real quick, and um, that'll be the end of the video. So, so let me wipe out some of this stuff. Um, Okay, so what we have is we say we have an, um, a proton moving in a magnetic field, and we're trying to, I'll give you the radius, which is equal to 15 centimeters. The charge which all of you should know if you're this advanced, should be 1.6 e to the negative 19th coulombs. Since it's a proton, it's positive. We have a magnetic field equal to 0.5 tesla. And we have a mass of a proton, which is equal to 1.67 e to the negative 27th kilograms. So, try to figure it out real quick. See if you can do it. Just pause the video and try it. Now we know Tesla, I'm going to go ahead and answer, is equal to Newton's divided by uh, coulombs times meters per second. Um, we know that um, R Q B divided by M is equal to V using this equation right here. So, and if we figure out the units, the Tesla right here, the Newtons will cancel out because we have mass times uh, distance. Or di sorry, 
Hold up. Um, so we have with the the kilograms, newtons is equal to kilograms divided by meters per second squared. Sorry, um, that should be kilograms times meters per second squared. And the kilograms will get canceled out. The um, meters per second will get canceled out, so there's only one second on the bottom. Then you have one here. We have kilograms meters per second squared divided by meters per second times coulombs. These will get canceled, canceled, canceled. Then we have the mass on the bottom of the equation. This will get canceled times the radius. And the seconds will get brought down because it's divided by seconds. So that will leave us with meters per second. So this equation is the correct equation. I know none of you might, some of you might not have understood that. You can rewatch it if you want, but it's just how I double check to make sure I'm using the right equation, and I suggest you do the same. So we have radius, which is 0.515 meters times the charge, which is 1.6 e to the negative 19th coulombs times 0.5 teslas divided by 1.67 e to the negative 27th kilograms. Which, if you plug it into your calculator, is equal to 7.185628 um, meters per second, but I'm going to round to 7.19 e to the 6th meters per second. This might seem really fast, but uh, particles moving in a magnetic field do move very fast. Um, that's how they can get particles moving nearly the speed of light, moving them in a magnetic field. Well, and an electric field, but... Um, yeah, so there's an example. That'll be equal to your velocity. Now, you could use these equations to virtually solve for any of it. Um, hope this has helped. If you wish me to answer any questions, comment on the YouTube video, or simply send a suggestion to my website, and I will help you out. Thank you for your time.